What's good everybody? It's your boy Dom. We are back with another video. Today I wanted to talk about the Drew Brees situation, man, because I really think it's important to analyze and break down what exactly went on. Um, before we get started on that, I just wanted to say thank you guys so much for just watching that last video about George Floyd. It was a very emotional video for me. Um, I just woke up in the morning randomly and just started uh, writing, you know, and as I wrote more, uh, it just kind of got to a long paragraph and I decided to post a video on it and it's gotten so many views already and like so many good responses. So I'm just glad that you guys could draw some inspiration from it. Um, if you haven't checked that out, please do, because we are dealing with so much negativity right now. And I think positive words of encouragement is definitely something that we can use as we're trying to go forward in this protest and we're trying to create change and all that stuff that is due for a long time, you know. But enough on that for now. Today I want to talk about the Drew Brees situation because it's really interesting how this turned in like the last two days or so. Um, for those of you who are not familiar, Drew Brees is a football player, he's a quarterback for the New Orleans Saints. And he had came out on about Thursday um, talking about the kneeling situation with Colin Kaepernick. And basically saying how he doesn't condone kneeling. He does not condone kneeling because he thought it was disrespectful to the American flag. Not realizing, I must say, in, in that instance, once he said that, that it really is not about the flag. Necessarily, based on my opinion. And a lot of people agreed. And Drew Brees, um, after talking to some teammates, he responded um, to President Trump. Because then Trump had said that... He doesn't want Drew Brees to apologize for his comments. But Drew Brees um, did apologize again the next day. This was Friday. And he said this. He said, Through my ongoing conversation with friends, teammates, and leaders in the black community, I realized that this is not an issue about the American flag. It has never been. We can no longer use the flag to turn people away or distract them from the real issues that we face in our black community. We did this in 2017, and regretfully, I brought it back with my comments this week. We must stop. My phone just went off. We must stop talking talking about the flag and shift our attention to the real issues in our systematic racial injustice, economic oppression, police brutality, and racial and judicial and prison, and prison reform. We are at a critical juncture in our nation's history if not now when then and then he goes on to say a little bit more but i think that's enough actually i can read it uh, we as a white community need to listen and learn from the pain and suffering of our black communities we must acknowledge the problems identify solutions and then put this into action the black community cannot do it alone this will require all of us now i wanted to give you guys some perspective here you know what i mean um, a lot of the things that happen between black and white people is based on perspective. And the way I say perspective is that the, the opinion you tend to have on things is based on the experience you had with it. So if you are somebody who grew up in a, in a rough neighborhood, um, your experience with police might be totally different than somebody else from the other side of town. You know, that doesn't mean that you guys can't come together and understand what in this instance is being protested but the problem is that some people who live on the other side of town per se um if you're the average uh, white kid um sometimes they choose to ignore what's true um because the truth is, is that police brutality does happen in both communities black or white but it can be worse on the other side of town. And those kids who live on the other side of town might not have the same opportunities as you and might not get the same chances as you as well. So I think if you grow up and you've never um, faced a situation before where you felt oppressed or you were truly in danger of, of, of losing your life, you know, um, growing up, you can have a totally different opinion about racial injustice, police, uh, systematic oppression, you know, a lot of these things that go on in, in, in lower income communities. But um, sometimes when you are somebody like Drew Brees that speaks on it and then you compare it to the American flag, um, sometimes you can come off, I think Drew Brees comes off as ignorant because I believe as a quarterback from the New York State's 
New York Saints. Wow. From the New Orleans Saints, um, you are faced with situations in the locker room where you are around players that do come from the other side of town and they have told you what it's like to live in those communities. So with that knowledge going in, it's kind of strange for you in the beginning to make that um, statement saying that um, it's disrespectful to the flag to kneel when kneeling and the flag are two different issues. You know what I'm saying? And that's the biggest problem that I see going on right now. Um, for those people who believe that this whole Black Lives Matter movement is just something that uh, black people are trying to create out of nowhere, um, are very, very misinformed. And it shows you that some people uh, absolutely live within their own bubble. And as long as their bubble doesn't break, they don't really care about what else goes on. Which I think is weird. It's really weird because it's not like the things that the Black Lives Matter movement is doing right now. It's not like it can help everybody. This movement can definitely help everybody. Not just black people. It can help white people too. You know, a lot of people want to come out here and argue that white people uh, are statistically killed at a higher rate than uh, black people. Which is not true. Because there's just more, there's more, there's more white people than black people, first of all, still. Remember, black people are the minority, white people are the majority. And since there are more white people than black people, of course it's going to look like there's more white people being killed. But we can't look at it that way. You got to look at how many of a certain demographic are in one neighborhood and how many of those people are getting killed compared to the other neighborhood. That's when you have honest discussions. You can't always um, have your political view and then stick to it because based on the experiences you have, you've never felt any type of oppression like that before and you feel like other people are just complaining. Why is it whenever black community says something, it's about, oh man, why, why are black people talking again? You know, they're always complaining and this and that. They're always complaining. You know why? In black community, because when black community says something, it always seems to fall on deaf ears. And a, and a lot of people tend to be tone deaf to what black people say because a lot of the things the black community says are true. You know, we don't have the opportunity all the time to um, go up in a, a nice household and go to college. You know, we don't have the opportunity um, to necessarily um, purchase your dream home in a nice neighborhood and stuff like that. You know, these, these things go back generations maybe two two generations that's what systematic oppression is it's not just about who you are today it was about who you were you know 20 30 years ago and that might not even be you that might be your grandfather you know so that's how we gotta look at this issue so turning it back to drew Brees, knowing everything that players around him who are african-american have been through it was not the right decision at the time to come out and say that because it's two different issues. If you're putting a flag with kneeling, you know, even if you put that together, there were plenty of uh, um, African-American uh, kids who had grandparents who fought uh, in World War II at the time, and they didn't get the hero's welcome. You know, so sometimes we got to take away our preconceived notions about thing and really look at the issue at hand. There's no way that the Black Lives Matter movement today is only for black people, but a lot of people don't want to admit that. Black people, Hispanic people, Asian people, even white people, white people can benefit from this. Do you see what these cops are doing? How hard they're being beaten with baton and all that? These things are no joke. These things are terrible. These things are absolutely terrible. And at this point, I find it so strange because it's not like they don't know they're being recorded. At this at this point, we know everything the cops do is... Everything the cops do is being recorded. I think my mic shut off real quick, you know? So it's really for a guy like Drew Brees that leads the locker room 
you know, with African American players, it's about coming together and then finding a solution with each other. It's not about separating anymore. It's not about bringing different topics into what we're trying to do today because, oh, well, that's what it is about. No, it's not just about the flag. It's about what is really going on in those communities, which he was aware of. I know he was aware of it because in the NFL locker room, a lot gets shared. And the fact that he still chose to to pick the other um, end of the spectrum by throwing the flag into it is where the disappointment came into play. But he understands now by apologizing. And I think that was the right thing to do because all of a sudden now, you know, we're, we're seeing a lot of people getting called out, by the way, on social media about racism and stuff like that. And I don't know how to feel about that because there's a part of me that says, yeah, it's good that you're calling out this so-and-so person for being racist or stuff like that. But, you know, I also believe in a, you got to give people a second chance. Yep, even me. Like, I'm African-American. And if somebody is being racist towards me, you know, like sometimes it, it might not just be racism. It's just ignorance. And the way they talk to you, the way they said something. Sometimes. I'm not saying all the time. I'm not saying all this. I'm not trying to give everybody a pass. But I do believe in redeeming yourself. And that's what Drew did. He redeemed himself. We should move forward. Uh, I think that's how we should live. I, I don't think everything we said should be taken as the last thing we should ever say to each other. You know, sometimes you can say something and learn from it. And other times you say something that are absolutely stupid. You know, I think uh, Jake Fromm uh, the other day said something about only white elites should own guns. You know, it's that, that's stupid. You know, stuff like that. But that's another topic for another day. Um, I just wanted to speak my thoughts on that. Uh, I'm really liking these videos now about social justices and stuff that's going on. I'm really passionate about it. I'm following it every day, you know. So we can definitely learn together from uh, the stories that we're seeing every day. But it's your boy Don with another video. And I'll see y'all next time, okay? Please like, comment, rate, subscribe. Do whatever you want to do. This is a place where you can just share and express our ideas. And, you know, this channel is definitely going to grow. So stick with me and I'll stick with y'all. But I'll see y'all next time, man. This is your boy Don and peace. I'm